We all have our own idea of our dream home. But the reality is many of us have to put up with houses that just don't work. The kids are living on top of each other. There isn't enough space to do all the things they'd like to do. By the time you've opened this cupboard and this drawer, you can't move and nobody can come in. But it is possible to get more hats for less money. Transforming a house into something spectacular might seem unaffordable, but I really believe it is possible to create your dream home for a fraction of the price of going and buying one, if you get it right. Oh wow, that looks really smart. Last year saw a whopping 164,000 home extensions successfully granted planning permission. But get it wrong and a badly designed extension can knock thousands off the value of a house. It's slightly nerve-wracking because this is our house which could crumble at any moment. We might be creating a monster. In this series, I'll be following the fortunes of those attempting to radically overhaul smaller homes for a fraction of the cost of buying a bigger one. The headboard of the bed is going to be this far away from someone <laughs> else on the loo. Too close for comfort. It's never a simple undertaking. That's a mission you set yourself. It is a mission, yeah. yeah. To me, with my bad UCSE maths, yeah. it's four metres. This yeah. is going to be a bumpy <laughs> ride, isn't it? I have to brush my teeth in a little small bucket. It's been held. But the rewards can be immense. Absolutely amazing. And this is the kitchen that you were hoping for. Yeah. The drink kitchen. The space is huge now. Our homes are our castles, but if you can't afford a castle that's big enough, you could always take something much less exciting and transform it into the house of your dreams. This week, I'm with two families hoping to do exactly that. <laughs> I'm in Cheshire with recruitment director Becky and mechanical engineer Mark Ridley, who live in an ancient cottage with their two children. They bought it seven years ago for just over £400,000. We really love this house. It's got a real amount of character. It used to be an 18th century dairy and we, we just want to stay here. They want to add a massive extension and give it a modern revamp, whilst also making the most of its original charm. Mark will be project managing. We haven't done this before, so we've got a very limited knowledge on what, mm. we should, what we're trying to do. Absolutely. How to add character rather than taking it away and make it a very symmetrical, cold Yeah, cold and space. make sure that we stop the house from becoming a featureless box. But first, I'm in Bracknell with builder Greg Pritchard and his wife, marketing manager Jo. They bought their barely habitable property four years ago for £247,000 and they've been saving up ever since for an extension that will finally give them the space they want. I think our friends thought we were mad, but we could just see what we'd make of it as far as a family home. It didn't mean for it to be this long, but here we are four years later, <laughs> living in a building site. In his spare time, Greg has been trying to make their three-bedroom home more livable. But with the arrival of Sam, any progress trickled to a halt. We only put the bath in about three months ago. So for four years, we didn't have a bath. We just had a shower. And this was the walk-in wardrobe. It's a definite work in, <laughs> in progress. This you spring. can have a bath now, but the um, bath water floods the garden. It doesn't actually go into a drain yet. Greg and Joe are desperate for a house that works and that has enough space to enjoy now and in the future. So what is their ideal home? They've brought me a few miles down the road to a quiet part of Bracknell to show me the kind of property they aspire to. I really like the garden and, and the layout of the house. It just offers that kind of space that we're looking for. A house like this would be £800,000. Yep. It's way out of our budget. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, your house at the moment would be worth probably 300000 Yes. Yeah, about yeah. that, yeah. Roughly half a million shorts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you don't have that? No, we don't. No. So how much have you got that you can spend? Um, we've got 150 grand to spend. Um, we were left some money by my uncle, um, and we've also saved up for the last sort of, four years to be able to do it. It would cost Greg and Joe £800,000 to move to their dream home, as their current property is now worth £300,000. 
so they'd need to find an extra £500,000. But they only have a budget of £150,000. With that, they want to create somewhere as amazing as this from a shabby, outdated box. And that's a huge ask. So is there enough potential in their current home to realise their ambitious plans? Do you know, the first thing I think of when I come here is that it's a really quiet cul-de-sac and this is the least exciting house. Now, if you can ever buy the worst house on a nice street, ka-ching, that is the solution to, to ending up with a really nice house for a lot less money. First impressions of Greg and Joe's 1960s relic suggest their dream might be impossible, but it has a hidden treasure. The reason it's really worth transforming this not very exciting house into something quite sensational is partly, of course, because of that amazing view. If you ever manage to get a plot with a not very exciting house with a view like that, then you're really onto something. But right now, this cramped three-bedroom home is a design disaster. Upstairs is Joe's study, their master bedroom, half-finished bathroom, Sam's room and small shower room. And on the ground floor, the living space is divided into kitchen, dining room and sitting room. Greg put in their cheapest chips kitchen when they moved in, but it was only supposed to be temporary. And why does this kitchen not work for you at the moment? There is nowhere to sit, there's no storage. We just can't move in here. It's just, just too small, isn't it? <laughs> when you open the back door, it smashes against the dishwasher. I, I hate the kitchen. It's just depressing and horrible. So in a way, is it this kitchen that's motivating the whole build, really? Definitely, yeah. Upstairs, their bedroom is not much bigger than their bed. This is your bedroom, isn't it? The master bedroom in the house. Yeah, it is. And it is quite wee, isn't it? It is. Particularly since having Sam, it has been a struggle. Builder Greg is going to be full-time project manager on the massive six-month build. And I want to really kind of shadow the builders as well as much as I can, because it's a, it's a big project, something that I've never done that big before, so. Exciting. Yeah, so you'll be here full time doing it and managing it and running it. That's quite a big commitment though to take on. Greg and Joe's vision for their home is certainly ambitious, if all goes to plan. Their 98 square meter extension will make their home more than twice as big. Downstairs, they'll have their open plan kitchen and living area, an office for Joe, with a built-in garage plus utility. Upstairs, there will be a large new second bedroom with ensuite. Joe and Greg's new master bedroom will have an ensuite toilet and shower at the entrance and a curved wall concealing a dressing room. Huge glass doors will make the most of that spectacular view. But with just three weeks to go before the build is due to start, I worry there's a major problem with the layout. They seem to be turning a lot of their new ground floor area into a huge garage. You're building this enormous extension and most of the extension on the ground floor is a garage and a hallway, a back door and a utility room, which seems kind of mad, mm. actually. And is there any reason that you want to have such a massive garage? I need a secure place for tools and building materials. It doesn't have to be It doesn't have big. to be as, as big as that. So you could have your tools in the shed at this side? Yep. And then you could lose the garage altogether? You just lost your garage. <laughs> <laughs> just lost the man's own. <laughs> I'm really sorry. There's always the shed. But there is a way of making far better use of all that space. Losing the garage and moving the utility room would provide an extra 20 square metres of open plan living and maximise that great view. They could add a separate playroom and move Joe's office to overlook the garden. I'm hoping Greg and Joe are open to such a radical rework of their plans. It was really nice to have Sarah's insight. She's really thrown cat among the pigeons now. Up in Cheshire, Becky and Mark have been dreaming of extending their cottage since they bought it as newlyweds. We really love this house. 
but ideally we want something bigger. Their three-bed cottage has higgledy-piggledy little rooms. Now they have children, Charlotte and Sam, and lots of visitors. They're craving more space. We've got family and friends that live a long way away, so if they come to visit, we want to make sure they can be accommodated uh, comfortably. Their cottage lies within Cheshire's Golden Triangle, a highly desirable area where many of Manchester's premier footballers live. Here, the kind of four-bedroom property Becky and Mark dream of owning is way out of their league. So these are the sort of houses that you'd ideally love to be able to mm. just go and buy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The side, the bottom left one looks like they're yeah. the closest in style to what we're looking for. Yeah, yeah. They really have sort of merged the new and the old, haven't they? Mm. They've really been sympathetic with the with the traditional features. So yeah, these houses to go mm. out and buy, you'd need about a million pounds. Yes. Yeah, we don't have a million pounds. No, we don't have a downside <laughs> to Unfortunately. them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and your house at the moment is worth about four hundred thousand. So how much money have you got to spend? About 160,000. Becky and Mark would need an extra 600,000 pounds to buy their perfect home, but they only have a fraction of that, 160,000, to try to create their dream out of their current house. That's quite a challenge. Buried within this quite long house is a, a really charming 200-year-old cottage. But that charm, hidden by two extensions in the 1970s and 80s, needs drawing out. Upstairs, there are two children's bedrooms and family bathroom. Mark and Becky's master bedroom is small, with a tiny ensuite and no storage. On the ground floor, there's a study, lounge and dining room backing onto a noisy main road, and a kitchen, utility and a garage. At the moment, it's all a bit of a mishmash, and I wonder just which traditional elements of their cottage Mark and Becky want to save. I like the beams. I think they're a nice feature, and I also like some seriously dodgy paint. <laughs> yeah, that, that that needs to come off. Yeah. yeah. So have you got a plan to get that back? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'd like to do that. The upstairs landing is the mix of modern and traditional that Becky is keen to recreate elsewhere. For us, one of the charms about the house is the fact that things are a little bit quirky, so you've got a bit of lumpy, bumpy plaster, some of the doors are different sizes, so we'd like to retain some of that. I want straight lines. <laughs> <laughs> <Shut> <laughs> I'm hoping Mark's joking, because personally, I think it's really important to keep a sense of history in this cottage. Their new 123-metre extension will transform the house. Downstairs, as well as a bigger study, the family will gain a huge lounge alongside an open-plan dining room kitchen. And beyond that, a family room and utility. Upstairs, there'll be a new large master bedroom with ensuite and walk-in wardrobe. Their old room becomes a guest room, and Sam's room extends to become a double. Mark and Becky do really need to hold on to every inch of quirkiness they can in their house, because there is a danger that the character of their 200-year-old cottage that they love so much could be completely lost with an extension of this size. I'm with two families hoping to create their dream house for a fraction of the price of having to buy one. In Cheshire, Mark and Becky Ridley are about to start the build they've waited seven years for on their 200-year-old dairy cottage. The risk is that uh, um, we don't like what we're going to create. <laughs> we might be creating a monster. And in Bracknell, after four years, Joe and Greg are also finally starting their new extension that will give their 60s house a giant, glorious makeover. They're hoping it will take six months. Builder Greg is project managing. This is certainly the biggest job I've been involved in. And he's getting stuck in. Living in a building site in February with baby Sam is turning out to be a cold, muddy nightmare. There's been some days when I couldn't physically leave the house because the mud and the concrete was so messy outside. It's been hideous. It's been horrible. Well, that, that's really stressed me out, is the mud. Up in Cheshire, Mark and Becky want to blend modern living with period character. Their 18th century cottage is right next to a busy road. Protecting them from the traffic noise are the original windows with secondary glazing which is a separate panel of glass fitted on the inside. 
The gap between the two creates a sound barrier. Mark and Becky want to replace them with brand new expensive windows with not just double but triple glazing. The windows actually are quite appropriate for the house yes. and it's amazing how quiet the road is mm. with the secondary glazing. Yeah. You could just really properly redecorate them mm. and keep the windows that you've got. Mm. Not sure about that. You're not convinced? No. There's a lot of money you're going to spend on yeah, those windows. Yeah, I think we also think that we kind of thought casement windows might be the best, just with a single bar across them. We'd like to replace the windows, but now you've sowed the seed of doubt <laughs> about the noise, I'm thinking, would it be good to maybe keep the secondary glazing? Changing the windows will be a huge outlay, around £19,000, and means losing original features from the cottage. There's lots of information about window sound insulation if you check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash beanie. As Mark and Becky's 25-week build gets underway and the builders start digging down to the foundations, they hit on a surprise. And as surprises go, it's a big one. First time in 25 years I've come across a well. Uh, first time ever I've heard of a house being built over one. Um, Older than their 200-year-old house, the historic well is kept topped up by naturally occurring groundwater. The biggest problem that you've got is the fact that it's full of water and it will always be full of water, but you could waterproof it. The well is right underneath the outside wall between the kitchen and what will become the sitting room. Fair is fair. Um, I knew there was going to be some problems, but I just didn't quite um, know there was going to be like a hole in the ground. So, oh dear. Unearthing a piece of history like a well is an exciting opportunity to create a special and unique feature, like a spiral wine cellar. Britain's older houses have all sorts of quirky objects, from coal chutes to inglenook fireplaces, which can be cleverly adapted and add value as well as beauty to your property. But Mark is adamant about the future of their well. We would never be tempted, I don't think, to make it into a feature. It's in the wrong place. I think structurally it's just too difficult to achieve. Financially it's just not in our budget at all. Um, so it's just damage limitation for us. Let's hope missing out on such a unique historic feature isn't a sign of what's to come. But if it's their budget that's worrying them, I can suggest one saving. Those triple glazed windows they want to buy will set them back more than £19,000. So I've brought them to Salford University for a somewhat unique experiment. I'm hoping this will prove that the secondary glazing they already have next to their original windows will outperform that expensive triple glazing in blocking out sound. So what we've done is as closely as possible replicate the windows you've already got in your house so we can see the difference in terms of sound insulation between what you've got and a triple glazed unit. So in here, We've got a surprise. So this is part of the Salford Choral Society. Where you go. Now Mark and Becky don't know which window is blocking the sound. This is window number one, the same as the triple glazing they want mm. to buy. Very good. But you can hear it. You can, you can hear, hear it. it yeah. yeah. But let's swap it for the other one. Now for window number two, the same kind they have in their cottage. We're now going to put in a single sheet of glass and then secondary glazing, 125 mil away from it, which is replicating as close as we can their windows. Brilliant. You can hardly hear that. It's very really quiet. But that is mm. a lot quieter, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. No, you can hardly hear them at all. The second window is the secondary glazed window. Yeah. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I knew. Yeah, that's interesting. If sound insulation is important, you probably are better off leaving the windows you've got in, or at least that design of window. Mm. Interesting. Yes. Difficult. It seems Mark is still set on his new windows. Even if it is 19 grand, they might be better spending elsewhere on the build. So I had a suspicion 
that Becky and Mark's secondary glazing was really effective, but I didn't realise it was so much more effective than triple glazing would be. Back in Bracknell, Greg and Joe have changed their plans and abandoned that huge garage. They're halfway through their build and the shell is up, but there is another major issue with their design. Greg and Joe have got a real problem with understanding how their new space is going to actually work. It's vital that they get their new room layout right at this stage before it's too late. And this time it's their master bedroom that needs sorting. This is um, nice to see. Hello. Look at that. It's swallowed up your original house, hasn't yes. it? It has a bit. But first, for a look at their new ground floor. So, no garage here. No, it's all been changed. Yeah, it's, the kitchen's bigger, less garage, lot less garage. <laughs> you no, no garage. No garage. Um, Are you but, upset at that? Oh, I've got over it now. A few weeks of crying <laughs> every night, sobbing over the old plans. No, I'm really happy. It's, it couldn't have changed the better. I think. I think it looks fantastic, and that is absolutely spectacular as a view. Now for the master bedroom. In Greg and Joe's original plans, the ensuite toilet shower room was by the door into their room. This is all really taking shape, isn't it? So this is going to be your bedroom. Yep. But they've made a last minute decision to move the ensuite into the middle of the room, which I'd personally question for all sorts of reasons. To help you visualise the space, I thought we'd mark out where the shower room is going to be. Which, considering you've got 50 cubic square <laughs> metres in this room, you've got Something about the same size as a small coffin <laughs> to have yeah. as your shower room. Yeah, it's ridiculous really, isn't it? Well, you said it. Mm. <laughs> and the pocket-sized ensuite isn't the worst part of their design. Now, this should be useful in more ways than one. This should show them very clearly where they're planning to put their loo. The, the headboard of the bed is going to be here, so right the other side of the loo is... <laughs> Someone's, Someone's head. sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Is that your side or my side of the bed? <laughs> Having your head this far away from someone else on the loo. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's a little yeah. bit too close to comfort. We like each other, but <laughs> no, no, I don't want to see that. <laughs> now I think you put it back where you were originally planning, yeah. in the corridor, and you can have a really nice big dressing room in here yeah. and a curved door. Into yeah, it. that sounds lovely. Yeah. Looks like Greg and Joe won't be flushing their romantic bedroom down the pan after all. And there's one idea that might make the most of their room with a view. A gorgeous freestanding bath in front of their balcony doors. Like many boutique hotels, this one has beautiful interior design and furniture. It's a great way to be inspired and to pick up the latest style trends from the experts. Here, this is real luxury. It's beautiful. Wow. <laughs> it's gorgeous. You do need to think about the outside of the tub because it will really be noticeable in the bedroom yeah. how the bath looks yeah. and how it stands. It's a really good idea. It's a lovely shape. They may not have room for his and her matching bathtubs, but a bath like this would look stunning in their room. This bath feels like it's in a slightly separate area partly because it's raised up, which is really useful for hiding plumbing. Also, a different floor covering is good because so that when you're out of the bath, yeah. you don't ruin the carpet. Yeah. Yeah. A bath in your bedroom is the ultimate in luxury. Place it where you have a pretty view or in front of a fireplace. Sometimes they can even work well in awkward spots. Choose a timeless style of bath that won't go out of fashion and won't clash with your bed. And if you're having a romantic bath for two, make sure the taps are in the middle so no one draws the short straw. Of course, there's only one way to find out for sure if a bath like this is for you. So then if you come up here oh, wow. and look out uh -oh. at that view, <laughs> <laughs> what you need is a cleaner husband. <laughs> I'm not sure what our neighbours would think. <laughs> We've seen lots of things that we'd like to take and use from the hotel visit. It's just made us see the space in a completely different light. I'm with two families hoping to achieve their dream by transforming and extending houses and creating their ideal homes. 
Bracknell, Greg and Joe are adding a 98 square metre extension to their grotty dated house. Greg has turned out to be a more than competent project manager. Greg's been incredible on the whole build. He's worked really long hours, which kind of shows me that he's enjoyed it because he wouldn't do it otherwise. But he and Joe have come up with some disastrous room designs. So right the other side of the loo is <laughs> someone's <laughs> sleeping. On your side and my side of the bed. <laughs> In Cheshire, Mark and Becky Ridley had a cottage full of history that didn't work as a home. But as their modern extension keeps growing, the original features are disappearing. We've still got the original 18th century door. There's been a bit of resistance from Mark about that, but it's still there. Yeah, I'm going to burn it. <laughs> They're four weeks into their build, and it's time to see how Mark and Becky and their dairy cottage are holding up. God, there's not much left of the original 200-year-old cottage now. I hope, after our acoustic experiment, they've decided to keep their original windows with secondary glazing instead of replacing them with triple glazed units costing £19,000. How are you? God, look at this. This is absolutely unrecognisable. I know. It's just mind-boggling. So, let's go and have a look inside. Right, okay. This is really zooming on, isn't it? Yeah. And so where are you with the windows? Changing the windows. You are. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We are, yeah. Even after the amazing, overwhelming evidence of the experiment, you're still changing the windows. Yes, but we're now going for double glazing, but with better acoustic properties. We've now selected a glass that is, you know, just specifically designed for noisy areas. And do you think it'll be as good as the secondary glazing? We won't know until they're all in. The acoustic windows are nearly as expensive as the triple glazed ones they were planning to buy, and it means another period feature of their cottage will be lost. The only thing left really are the windows and they're going... There's the beams. The beams are still there upstairs. One um, beam. Yeah. Two beams. Two beams. Two beams. Um, I think we did say originally, yeah, we were going to keep all these original features and make it like a period property. But, I, you know, as we've developed with it, I don't, think, I don't think that's what we really wanted. When we were looking at windows originally, Mark was looking at aluminium windows. I was looking at your really traditional... I, I was not looking at aluminium windows. Were. I'll tell you what, if we we're going to go along this route, you actually <laughs> said originally that you wanted new PVC. Only if they looked traditional. <laughs> Mark and Becky's next decision is choosing a staircase to go in their new extension. What sort uh, of style? Quite a simple style, um, sort of traditional materials. But so. this is quite a modern feature, isn't it? I mean, this is yeah. Yeah. as far as traditional old oh, costumes yeah. go. I haven't seen many. Not, definitely doesn't fit into I'm that thinking world. 200 years ago they didn't build staircases <laughs> like that. No, def no, definitely did not. No. Okay, so the one thing I do think about staircases is that. They cost a lot of money, they're complicated to install, and if you're going to go with anything that could look traditional and original, maybe the staircase is the place to do it, because you're absolutely just removing any element of a 200-year-old cottage with that staircase. Staircases can make a huge statement, good and bad, so you've got to be extremely careful with your choice. Mark and Becky could really learn a lot from this house. It's not a 200-year-old cottage, but it is a period house. And whilst they've introduced cool, clean lines throughout it, the staircase is in keeping with the original house. Considering how expensive and complicated they are to change, fashion statements can be made elsewhere without having to have such deep pockets. Designs start at around £3,000, but be prepared to pay £25,000 and upwards for an architect-designed, no-expense-spared, stunning focal point. The owners of this Victorian terrace decided to go for a contemporary staircase. But instead of it being a predictable interpretation, this magical staircase feels like it literally grew out of the ground. For more information about staircases, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash beanie. In Bracknell, all the walls of Greg and Joe's supersized extension are up, but they're still going round in circles with their layout. Now that the extension's here, we've realised the vast area that we've got. Just making it all sit together nicely and making use of all the space because it is pretty vast and I'm not sure we actually need all this space. <laughs> Greg and Joe have spent four long years planning their extension 
And I feel in that time they've slightly lost sight of, of what their objective is. I think they're drowning in all the space. And they don't really know how to handle it. Fortunately, in the master bedroom, they've moved their ensuite toilet and shower back to where it was in the plans. But this great gadget will show them there's still a problem. Where they've placed their bed means Jo will have to go right around it every time she wants to go into her dressing room. You know, it, it is a big space, but it's going to feel quite cramped, actually. Yeah. Right. The room is really effectively one great big bed and a little tiny walkway around it. Yeah. yeah. I just wonder whether you really should be dividing this space up quite the amount that you are. Okay. And, right. and whether you wouldn't be better off turning the bed, pushing the wall back. Yep. So you have a much bigger bedroom mm. and have a yeah. door on the curve, because yep. they're beautiful curved doors anyway, mm. they're lovely. Given the choice between a bigger dressing room or bigger bedroom, the bedroom wins hands down. It's really shown us that that wasn't the best design to go with and that we could make so much more of the space. Yeah, we can save a lot of time and scrap that idea straight out, can't we? <laughs> yeah. After six months, Mark and Becky Ridley are now on the final stretch with their giant new extension. And it's the moment Mark's been waiting for. Windows arrived today. So um, that was the, the, probably the biggest single spend that we've uh, had to do. The acoustic double glazed windows are costing £17,000. I only hope they'll be as effective in blocking out sound as the secondary glazing they already had. I'm happy with the windows. It's a good colour, uh, the font looks brilliant, so happy. Looking forward to see how, uh, how the noise is. With the old windows junked and the new windows in, it's the final push to the finish. At the beginning of this project, the Ridleys wanted to retain and add character to their cottage. I know that they have evolved their plans as the build has gone on. I'm just hoping that they haven't gone too far away from what they were originally hoping and that they're genuinely happy with the end result. Before they started, the three-bedroom dairy cottage had traditional charm, but it didn't work for them as a family, and the two old extensions had left the layout in a bit of a mess. But now Mark and Becky have doubled their space and turned their cottage into one seamless and show-stopping four-bedroom house. That is unrecognisable. Hi, uh, Hi hello, how are you? Good to see you. Hello. Look at this house. Tremendous. That's amazing. God, you wouldn't recognise it from the original house, would you? Definitely not, no. Seems a little bit. Just a bit. The rooms of this country cottage were small and dark, and the main living areas were right next to the busy main road. The large garden was barely visible from the inside. Now the living space overlooks the garden and is completely open plan. From the sitting room, through the kitchen, diner, and onto the family room. The kitchen was at this end of the room, wasn't it? Yes. So now it's been moved to this end of the rooms, mm -hmm. so it's a bit more of a buffer between you and the road. How do you find living in the space now that you've done that? Well, before we couldn't actually see in the garden when we were eating, so it's, uh, it's now nice to be able to look out in the gardens. You sat eating your meal and have all the doors open and just walk out into the garden with a drink or, you know, the children can be playing outside. and It, it just makes it a lot more indoor-outdoor living. When Mark and Becky were planning their extension, they were keen to keep whatever they could of their quirky cottage features. And their builders even uncovered an ancient well. But as the new house started to take shape, Becky and Mark's vision also changed. You have truly modernised this cottage. You know, we had to make some compromises, there's no doubt. Although there is the odd little, little nod <laughs> to the original house. Now, you have got some original features, because this lump of stone was covering the well you found, wasn't it? Yes, it was actually holding the house up at one stage. But you did have a door into the kitchen that you were going to reuse as well. We didn't keep it. No. What happened? It fell apart. Do you believe him? Maybe. I mean, we did have the door space to fit the old door for quite a long time, and then one day the door had mysteriously disappeared, and <laughs> Mark had told me that we couldn't reuse it. I might have said I might have wanted to burn it, but I quite like talking points. So, you know, if, if I could have kept it, I still would have kept it. 
honest. Yeah, girl. Honestly. I get the impression slightly that from the beginning of this project, you're totally unsentimental about the old house. You're saying, <laughs> no, I just want a nice house, actually. All yeah. oh, our sentimentality has <laughs> definitely gone out of the window now, hasn't it? I'm happy with the way it's gone and what, we, what we've been left with, so I'm, I'm happy with that. But Mark and Becky have added one more traditional looking feature. They decided against a modern staircase and have chosen a classic oak design that complements the two original wooden beams in the ceiling. Upstairs, instead of their cramped old bedroom, Mark and Becky can enjoy their spacious new master bedroom with its modern ensuite. There's an elegant new guest room, so when grandparents and other family come to stay, they can sleep in comfort. Finally, the most controversial element of this modern transformation. Instead of keeping their original windows, they've gone for acoustic double glazing. They do look beautiful, yes. I have to say. They are fabulous. How do you feel about them? I think they're brilliant. Obviously, we love the look of them. But in terms of soundproofing, I mean, we've been stood here, there's been lorries coming past the room and you can't hear them. I do think it's slightly noisier than it was. I think it is actually slightly noisy. Only, but yeah, tiny amount. And I think you are more aware of it, partly because it's open plan, so wherever you are in the space, you see the cars going past. Mm. But I think... They look really smart. Yeah, I mean, we're really happy with them, and obviously yeah. we've been living in it, and and we've not noticed a huge difference. To try and do something without secondary glazing and get this close, I think we've done extremely well. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm happy. Yeah. So you're standing by a new windows. We are, yes. Yeah. The windows cost around seventeen thousand pounds, but the most important thing is that Mark and Becky have ended up with exactly what they wanted. It's been a huge mission and they've certainly achieved their dream home. But have they managed to create it for a fraction of the cost of buying a new one? Well, when you set out on this journey, your house was worth about 400,000, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And and you spent, what, about 190,000? Yeah, about 190,000. Yeah. Their dream home in this area would have cost a whopping million pounds. And it would have cost them 600,000 pounds to move to it. Mm -hmm. But they've managed to create their own dream house for £190,000. They went £30,000 over budget, but that's still a massive saving of £410,000. You would stand a really good chance of getting somewhere possibly up to £800,000 for it. So that would mean that if you did come to sell it, mm. you'd probably make about £200,000 profit on it. That's fantastic, isn't it? Sold. Let's <laughs> move. <laughs> Buy that house in France. Dump the, ki dump the kids. <laughs> the transformation that Mark and Becky have done to this house means it's unrecognisable. Now, it may not be quite what they set out to achieve, but the end result is a home that works really well for their family right now and into the future. Coming up, the Pritchard's new palace is full of magic. It's fantastic, <laughs> it's a secret door. For the past five months, Greg and Joe Pritchard have been building a huge new extension to bring their 1960s house into the 21st century on a budget of £150,000. There's still a lot to achieve to get to the finishing line. Now it's the day they've been looking forward to, the end of their tiny and practical kitchen as Greg knocks through to the giant new kitchen living space. Do you know what, I've been working so hard I haven't had a chance to look at the view. Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? Amazing. But while Greg's delivering on the high-end build, he and Joe aren't sure how to tie the kitchen into the living space without losing the warm feel they want. A good way to narrow down style decisions is to look at some state-of-the-art kitchen design. If you're not able to extend, think about how you could update or reconfigure your kitchen. A new kitchen is believed to add about 5% to the value of your property. Is there one particular style here that you really love? Um, we like the no-handle look, so the cleanness of the lines. It is great, this kitchen, mm. it's gorgeous. But I think a little bit of softening it up would be a good thing. Even introducing bits of colour within this design mm. would work really well. Greg and Joe could also inject warmth by contrasting stark white units with natural tones like wood. 
There's also some fantastic gadgetry you can get that will make it a kitchen, but also not a kitchen, mm. and able to shut down as a kitchen whenever you want it to. An ultra-modern extractor fan like this can disappear completely from view. When you're done with it, nice. away it goes. Leaving lovely, clean lines. Mm. Yeah, yeah nice. that is a really nice feature. There are plenty of cutting-edge appliances out there, but the most important element of all is to make it suit the way you live. As long as it feels homely and, and like you can relax there, then that's what matters to us. It's been a massive challenge for Greg and Joe, but after six months of hard graft, they're finally at the end. When I first came here, this was one of the least exciting houses in the street. But that is one of the most spectacular transformations I've ever seen. The couple's pokey place was once an eyesore. Now it's a four-bedroom palace and definitely a match for its beautiful setting. Goodness me, how utterly fabulous. Over the years, Greg and Joe had been making do with an unfinished and outdated house. Now they have a beautiful, spacious family home that will suit them for years to come. It's strange to think that if they'd stuck to their original plans, this huge open plan living space simply wouldn't have happened. This was actually going to be the utility room and that was going to be a car and a yeah. garage. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. it. Yeah, yeah. What do you feel about the changes? Oh, we, we oh, love yeah, it. I, I love mean, the it, kitchen's yeah. twice the size it could have ever been. As soon as we, you said not to have a garage, it really got me thinking what we can do with the space and it just freed up so much more room to, to move the kitchen into a different area, move the utility to a different area. So it was, yeah, it was a good little tip. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> Greg and Joe were worried about the kitchen area looking too clinical, but they've created a perfect balance. But these lovely splashes of colour here it means that it's broken up and it's not a big white sterile yeah. box. Now I love the fire, I think it looks fantastic and it's an absolute centrepiece. It will face any direction we want it to and we can also remove it if we don't want to have it there. Is it easy to take up and down? Mm, Are you going to do it every day? <laughs> Giving up that garage also freed up space for another room. It's fantastic, it's a secret door. <laughs> a playroom for two-year-old Sam. I think this would have just been a garage dumping room. Yeah, it's a vast improvement. Now, I have to say, I really take my hat off to you two because as a family home, this actually can't be improved. It's as good as it could possibly be. Upstairs, Joe and Greg were squashed into a very small double bedroom. Spectacular! Look at that! Now their master bedroom is the haven that Joe always imagined. The eye-catching whirlpool-style bath looks out over that wonderful view framed by floor-to-ceiling glass doors. The vaulted ceiling gives a sense of space and Greg has built a curved wall with a hidden door into the dressing room and ensuite. For four years you lived in this house and you managed to sort of cobble it together to make it work-ish. You didn't have a bath at all for no, four years. No. <laughs> and now that's quite a spectacular bath. Yeah. <laughs> it's so luxurious and having the view and the setting, it was, yeah, it was like being on holiday. Now we're really glad that the layout is as it is because I think it's going to suit us for many years to come. It's certainly spectacularly spectacular now. <laughs> Thank so you. I'm very envious. It's lovely. <laughs> it's been an exhausting six month building marathon, but there's no doubt they've created their dream. But have they achieved it for a fraction of moving to a new house the same size in the same area? When you look at it now and you look at the house, and I mean, it is absolutely beautiful now. I'd kind of forgotten what we'd been through because this is just exactly what we wanted. Well, you've done it with your own fair hands yeah. and that's pretty yeah. flippin' impressive. Yeah. Knowing the effort that Greg put in and the thought that he put in to make it for our family just makes it worth so much more for us. So do you feel very proud of the fact that you have built yeah. your family? Yeah, I feel proud. I'm glad she likes it. So this is now your dream house and 
You were hoping to spend 150,000 on it, weren't you? How much did you end up spending? We've gone over budget. We actually spent nearer to 200,000, um, so we took out a loan for that extra bit, but it just meant that we could get all the garden done and kind of just complete the house. Yeah, just finalise it, really. Their dream house was worth £800,000 and it would have cost them £500,000 to move to it. But they've managed to build their own dream home for £200,000. That's a saving of £300,000 to get the place they wanted. And there's even better news. I think really conservatively you would definitely get 750000 for it. But I think you'd get an awful lot more than that. So you've created a huge amount of equity in your home as well. Definitely 250,000. That's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I never, never ever thought we'd create that much equity and go and buy myself a new van. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine being in another house? I know there are lots of beautiful houses in the world, but this one, you know, it's just everything I would want in a house. It's perfect. Greg and Joe have worked tirelessly and created a beautiful, beautiful family home for them to live in. And Greg's hard work over the last six months has meant that he's created a quarter of a million pounds of equity that's now sitting in their home. If you translated that to a salary, that is really not bad going.